This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you my new little project, which is a miniature two-channel voltmeter for breadboards. The project is condensed into this tiny 12 by 24 mm PCB, and it only contains a few components. But trust me, it is a very useful gadget. This time I went for a red PCB with white silk screen color, just to have a bit variety in the colors of my PCBs. The front side will accommodate all the surface mounted components and the back side is used for some information such as my website and the purpose of the PCB, but it also contains three tabs that can be used for programming the microcontroller. When the circuit is completed, it should be plugged into a breadboard. This can be done in two ways that I will present later in the video. So I picked two different types of pins, a straight one and a bent one. Then, to extend the default voltage range of the ADC of the microcontroller, the circuit has a voltage divider. So I need these 10K and 3.9K resistors to increase the voltage range to 12V instead of the original 3.3V. Then I decided to run the circuit at 3.3V while expecting the user to have 5V available on the breadboard. This is very typical for microcontrollers such as the Arduino and uh, similar ones. Therefore, the circuit has a low dropout voltage regulator that needs two capacitors. And of course, we need the voltage regulator as well, which is a simple and cheap MCP1700 voltage regulator. The microcontroller that takes care of the measurements and drives the display is a CH32V003J4M6 microcontroller. It is a tiny 8-pin microcontroller and it can be regarded as a better alternative for an AT Tiny 85 if you know how to program it. If you don't, check out my playlist. I have a lot of programming examples for this specific microcontroller family. Although the number of parts is small and the components are not too difficult to solder by hand, I purchased the stencil to make my life easier and also because I can record the nice footage of spreading the solder paste on the PCB. Speaking of PCB, if you are interested in this project, don't forget to visit my PCBWay project page where you can get either the PCB or the wall assembled circuit from PCBWay. But even if you are not specifically interested in my circuit, I recommend you to check out PCBWay's website because they just started their Christmas sales campaign. You can fetch valuable coupons and gifts for free and use their services at great discounts. So head over to their page and check out their ongoing promotions. Now let's go back to the circuit and let's assemble it. So as I said, the circuit is super simple, as you can see it doesn't contain too much components and the components are neatly distributed on the PCB. 
However, one thing is still missing, which is perhaps the most important part of the project. It is a 0.42 inches OLED display. I actually designed the circuit for this specific display, so that's how the width of the PCB ended up being 12 millimeters. It is the width of the OLED display circuit board. As you can see, it fits the PCB nicely. Also, another part which I still need to attach to the PCB is the 4-pin header that I mentioned earlier. Now you can see how the circuit should look like when both missing components are attached to it. So first, let me attach the 4-pin header. I came up with a little trick to hold the PCB flat while I try to solder the 90 degree pin. I just plug in another set of identical pins to the OLED display side. So now the PCB is in level. And now it's very easy to quickly solder these 4 pins to the PCB. As you can see now, the circuit sits in the breadboard very nicely. 4 pins give a solid support to it, so it won't bend or move around in the breadboard. I purposefully soldered the pins in a way that they are on the back side of the circuit so the front looks a bit cleaner. The next challenge is soldering the OLED display in place. As you can see, when it is fully inserted, the chip on the OLED display, a voltage regulator if I'm right, is touching the microcontroller. It should not be an issue, but to be sure, I want to have a little air gap between those components. So I just pick the thicker piece of paper and put it between the display and the circuit. This helps me to maintain a small gap while soldering and then I can remove the paper when I'm finished. Now let's look at the PCB in the breadboard again. It stands there nicely and the gap is also well kept. So now I don't really expect any disturbances from the display. And with this the circuit is done so let's test it and let me demonstrate it. So I put together a very simple demo circuit for this purpose. It consists of two potentiometers both are fed by 5 volts, the same as the input voltage for the PCB itself. Also you can kind of see how I imagine the usage of this circuit. When you work on your project on a breadboard where you want to measure voltages, you don't need to probe the circuit with a multimeter, which can be sometimes cumbersome if your circuit is crowded, but you can just have this small circuit somewhere on the breadboard, let's say typically in the corner, and use one of its two input channels to measure the voltage across your circuit. As you can see, the circuit reacts to the changes of the potentiometer on both channels, but let's find out if the readings are correct. I did not really put any efforts to calibrate the ADC, and I used the nominal values of the resistors when I calculated the multiplier for the voltage divider, so we can expect some deviations, but it should not be too much. Also, I just print the readings as is, so I don't do any averaging on them, which could, for example, improve the readings. As you can see, the first channel is spot on, it gives almost the same readings as the multimeter, and the second channel is a bit off, but only by about 30 millivolts. For me this is acceptable, because I'm not looking for a 6.5 digits performance, I just want to get reasonable readings, and as you can see it, the circuit does it well. So if you are interested in this circuit, once again visit my PCBWay project site, but also visit my website because I wrote a little article about this circuit and shared some extra resources there. Also, please consider supporting me by becoming the member of my channel. It helps me to invest in these kind of projects and uh, continue producing these kind of content. So I hope that this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.